Surrealist artists are driven to make art that shocks and surprises. Art that stops people in their tracks and makes them think. Don't you want to make art like that? Art that's puzzling. Or says something powerful and surprising. Art that's wonderful and unexpected. Art that starts with a big idea and grabs your attention. Art like this. The Disintegration of the Persistence of Memory by Salvador Dali. You've probably seen it before. Melting Clocks, a work inspired by dreams part of the subconscious mind. This amazing painting is on exhibit at the Dali Museum in St. Petersburg, Florida. Now get ready for a game changer. How would you like your original art to hang in the Dali Museum with some of the most famous surrealist art in the world? You're just three steps away. One, come up with a big idea. Two, create it, paint it, draw it. Use mixed media, photography, or digital art. Try combining found objects to see what interesting combinations can occur. Watercolors or just about any medium that you want. And three, this is the most important part, enter the Dali Museum Student Surrealist Art Competition. Challenging, right? But so doable by anyone with a big idea. And I'm here to help you create your best work and provide you with the tools that you need, including prompts to get you started. I'm gonna teach you how to make surrealist art. Before we start, let's talk a little bit about surrealism and surrealist art, because they're different. Surrealism was a movement, a group of people who focused on the world of dreams in order to create a new reality, a reality that was beyond real or surreal. The surrealist movement use writing, art, and philosophy to rebel against conformity. It revolutionized how we express ourselves. The Surrealism movement ended as a result of World War II. But Surrealist art continues to influence and inspire. So why Surrealist art? Just look at this winning art by Florida high school and middle school students. Using their artistic skills and their subconscious imaginations, students used a range of surrealist techniques, like juxtaposition and displacement, double images and transformation, metamorphosis and dreamlike settings, dislocation, and symbolism. The best part is, you don't have to be the most skilled or talented artist to get into the show. The judges are looking for the unexpected and the adventurous. They're looking for your big idea. The meaning behind your art. Your thought process. And how you use surrealist techniques. They want to be surprised by your personal and unique expression. Or, as Salvador Dali said, you have to systematically create confusion. It sets creativity free. In other words, it has to be surreal. The great surrealists explored techniques to give their work an irrational or dreamlike quality. Let's look at how Salvador Dali used some of these surrealist techniques. Dislocation places items where they don't typically belong, like a cabinet on a beach. Juxtaposition puts things together that don't normally go together. Levitation creates the appearance of suspended animation. Transformation shows something in the process of change, such as a child becoming an adolescent and growing to an old man. Dali also uses other techniques in this painting, such as double images to create a visual puzzle. Transparency makes it possible to see through objects which are typically solid or opaque. Scale changes the way we think about an object's normal size. Many surrealists use more than one technique, and they all contribute to the dreamlike feel of the completed work. Another technique found in this surrealist painting is symbolism. The face is a symbol for Dali. The cannon symbolizes war, and the spider, or daddy long legs, as seen on Dali's face, is a French symbol of hope. Double images create an illusion of two distinct images that can be seen within the same configuration, perhaps adding hidden meaning. This painting contains a double image of the Venus de Milo and a Spanish bullfighter. Creating double images is especially difficult and just one of Salvador Dali's surrealist trademarks. Now it's your turn. How do you get started? How do you make surrealist art? Do you get the idea that the surrealists were looking for something puzzling? Making a statement. Or just having fun? They were, and so should you. So, let's have some fun. I want you to think about combining two or more living objects. 
That's what this student did. This art was created by a middle school student. It's called Rude Language. It uses dislocation and juxtaposition while combining two living objects. Here's another work that combines living objects while using elements of dislocation and scale. How about this prompt? Combine a landscape with a living object. This high school student played with scale, dislocation, and juxtaposition. Surrealists are drawn to the surprising and grotesque. The surrealist techniques are all there, but what's the big idea behind their art? The big idea, the artist statement, and the title are all really important to the judges. Let's do one together. Juxtapose two different items from your kitchen. Combining two functional objects together can sometimes render them purposeless, and then they can become symbolic objects, and therefore surrealist objects. Now that you see how prompts can work, here are a few more to get you started. Combine a landscape or something living with technology. Play with scale by making an object bigger or smaller. Remove an item from a set it always belonged to. Here's some best practices. And some more prompts to get you started. Allow your subconscious to guide your hand in making marks on the page. Trust intuition to let you know that you're making the right choices. Here is student artwork that began with that process. This is called psychic automatism. In my digital art class, I give students a vintage photo and have them create a surreal environment using Photoshop. This is an example of a student's work from that prompt. You can use a prompt called Weird Words. Cut 15 words out of a magazine, mix them up and choose five. Dreams, face, puzzling, breaks, and shell. This is the type of art that can be created from a prompt like this. Try it, see where it leads you. Use an anamorphic grid, which will force you to make unusual distortions in your composition. This student art started with an anamorphic grid. Here's a one inch grid I put over my dog and then made an expressive anamorphic grid on paper to distort the image. If you wanna create great surrealist art, go to the museums, study the masters, and tap into your imagination and subconscious. Surrealism relies on realism and not abstraction. Try keeping a dream journal. This is a work of art that came out of that process. So start thinking of your big idea. Most importantly, have fun. Use the techniques. Use the prompts. Twist the laws of nature. Rewrite them. This is creative freedom. Create art that grabs my attention. Reflect on the human experience. Rebel against conformities. Create art that uses your most powerful tool. Your imagination. You can do this. You can do this. You can do this. Start thinking. Start creating. And I hope to see your surrealist art hanging at the Dali Museum.